Hi, I'm Jeff Putnam. You know, as a fly casting instructor, I get a lot of questions. One of the most frequently asked questions lately is what is a switch rod? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Switch rods are one of the most practical tools for fly fishing. Switch rods are generally a little bit longer than our single-handed trout rods that we're used to using, which are around nine feet long. Switch rods are a little bit shorter than our typical two-handed spay rod. The nice thing about a switch rod, it lets you cast with one or two hands. By using two hands, I can release the fatigue at the end of the day from casting single-handed all day. Casting with two hands takes a lot less energy and effort. Switch rods, because of their length, allow us to control our presentation at further distances, keeping our fly in the water longer. Switch rods can also be used for overhead casting. If I'm fishing on the surf, if I'm fishing in a lake, switch rod's a great way to go. One of the most practical applications for this rod is spay casting techniques. Once we've selected our switch rod, it's time to match up the appropriate reel. The reel is generally one size or two line sizes larger than the switch rod I'm putting it on. So this example would be a seven weight switch rod. One of the most popular fly lines available for switch rods today are these new short belly switch rod spay lines. What that means, another really popular line is called a skagit head. A skagit head is simply a very large diameter, short head, approximately 20, 25 feet long, that has a lot of mass that's designed to turn over big flies and heavy sink tips. If you're using a floating fly line, your leader should be one to one and a half lengths of the switch rod that you're using it on. This is extremely important if you decide to use a spay casting technique because that longer leader... Here's another great opportunity to talk about the advantages of a switch rod. Here we are fishing with bushes directly behind us. If I were to conventionally strip this fly line in and then overhead cast, you're gonna see I'm right up into those bushes behind me as soon as I pick the fly line up off the water. That's where spay casting really comes in handy and that's what a switch rod's really designed for. Starting with the rod really low at the water surface, fly line's at the end of a drift. Let's go through that snake roll now and forget these bushes are even behind us. It's a great way to cast to put the fly out in front of us when we're limited on that back cast room. Rod tip travels in a straight line to the target and away from the target to set up a D-loop before making the forward cast. Lifting the rod up, bring the anchor point back, anchors, there's my forward cast. If you pay attention to the rod tip and the path that I trace as I bring the rod backwards, this is the secret to keeping the anchor point established on the, the longer length of these rods makes them a practical tool when fishing at longer distances. You can see how easy it is to mend and really control the presentation of the fly with this length of a rod. It's really the setup for the snap T that makes this cast happen. And the setup is simply lifting the rod, coming back to the surface, repositions the fly line. When I do that, I need to form a belly three to five feet below the rod tip. This next example is an incorrect belly. Notice there is none below the rod tip. The belly only forms once the current brings the fly line downstream from the rod tip. During a snap tee, after snapping the rod up and down to change the fly line position, simply reach and point in the direction you want the cast to go to. Follow this motion with a straight line coming back to set your D-loop up, maximizing the Double energy. Double spay is a great cast. Whether you're fishing from river right as a right-handed caster, if you're fishing on river left, as a left-handed caster, this is a great cast for both sink tips and floating fly lines. We always start with the fly line directly below us in the water. We start by lifting the rod tip up to drop the fly line in front of me on the water surface. At this position, it's much easier to establish my D-loop 
over my left shoulder. Then I make my forward cast. Let's go through the steps for the double spay. Are going to be feeding on, which could be small crabs, bait fish, sand eels. They're all found right here in the surf zone. With a switch rod, it makes it really easy to just simply overhead cast one or two times. I've got plenty of distance out in front of me with the length of the rod and just follow it in with the retrieve. You can vary the retrieve as well if we need a little bit more speed. To the it's best to look for prime surf and river mouth fishing at low tide so you can see the sandbars and the places where it'll be deep during high tides. It's also possible at low tide. It's a really good choice is using a little longer switch rod. If I had to wait out here any further, the length of this rod would allow me to keep a little more line aerialized, to keep my cast from hitting the water so I can get a little bit more distance.